So hello and welcome to the Hugo Hall YouTube channel. This is our first video and this time we're gonna talk a little bit about multiplayer beginner tips. If this is your first time playing in a multiplayer game or if you have played a few games before, there's a lot of things you need to consider and you need to think about, especially if you've been playing single player before, because the multiplayer experience is a whole lot different. One of the first and most important thing is teamwork. When you're playing with a bigger group, we are about 30, 40 players a game, you have a lot of players, a lot of units, a lot of things happening, a lot of micro going on everywhere on the map. Uh, if you have a few units, you maybe can't utilize them that much, but if you communicate, you coordinate attacks with other players, it will be hugely more effective most uh, and give your opponent a much harder work job at countering your offensives, your attacks, your surrounds. Uh, so you need to talk to your team and do it beforehand, before game, if you need help, if you need tips, uh, if there's a planning group, like a high command for each team, uh, participate, listen to what's happening, uh, figure out which role am I going to take this time, will I specialize in something, will I go marines, should I go tanks, what's my job, what's my purpose, how do I fit in in this huge game with a lot of participants. Uh, the other thing that's very important to think about if you just played single player, the AI is kind of stupid, they won't do advanced maneuvers. Uh, what we want to do in a multiplayer game is surround other people's units and annihilate them. So you just completely wipe them. And if you see here in our last game here on the Eastern Front, uh, there's different possibilities down here for annihilation of units. If you see here, we have eight German tanks uh, in this uh, piece. We have somewhat like eight uh, light tanks here of the Soviets in here. If the Soviets attack here and take Saporizhia, we will lock in these tanks and we could annihilate them. Uh, what we would want to do, if this is happening, we also want to pin down these tanks. Because you see here, yeah, we're getting them there. We would like to pin down that tank and counter-attack there, uh, just to see if we can get a great surround. Try to get these units out, because you see, these are almost surrounded. We're at eight tanks, four special forces. So going about this, these are going down here. They're trying to attack. These ones are holding, so we need to go. These ones are standing still, because the AI are stupid, and it's not going out. So what we want to do is just make these surrounds against each other, uh, and try to pocket, make a pocket, surround that pocket, and annihilate the units. So it's a lot of that happening all over the front. This is just one part. Probably this time the Soviets are going to lose, but it was an opportunity to try to do this around other way around. Uh, but it's a lot of things happening. So that's the kind of idea. You have to find exploits where the enemy is weak, try to focus your forces against them and annihilate units around them. Make a pocket uh, and annihilate that pocket. Uh, so that's a huge part of actually playing the game, trying to defeat your opponent. Another thing that's very important to know is that you might have made plans before you think the game is going, gonna go this way, you're making tanks, you're making marines, you're gonna go do this, you're gonna do that. Whatever you're planning, you have an opponent that's counter-planning, they have their own plans, they have their own things they're going to do. So as in real life, no plan survives first contact with reality. So it might be a good plan, it might work, it might not work, something's gonna be tweak tweaked and you need to work with them. But that's a hard part of the game and you will learn as you go what works, what doesn't work. <sighs> that your opponent will have their plans on their own and will make life hard uh, for you. Another very important uh, uh, thing of the game is the economic system. Uh, it's a military game, you will need military equipment, and you will need mills. Uh, there's different methods, how are you going to go about this, depending on team, depending on economic laws and so forth. Uh, but I would say if you build civilian factories up till two years, 
Uh, that's one of the meta. It could be that you should not build that many sieves at all, depending on teams. But absolute maximum two years of civilian factories. Don't build steel mills, other kind of resource stuff if you're not really, really needing them. Trade with your team, share the civilian factories, it will be much more efficient. You will have a funner game because you will have more output of military units. So mills are very important, don't forget about them. It's not a, a country building game in that kind of sense. The most factories in them do, won't win. It's the one who had the biggest military power over the course of the years that will win. So, uh, there's a lot of more things you need to think about. A very good thing to actually do before game is to do a speed run. Uh, you have perhaps gotten some templates, some tips on how to do. You may might have read our guide, getting some tips, think about stuff. Do a speed run. Play your uh, country, see what's happening, see if they have some bonuses, something you can do with them. Do you get enough troops to move around to do something? So one speed round run is always recommended. You can plan more, of course, if you want, but at least one speed run. Uh, if you go for one speed run, you will have a much fun, more fun game. You will know what's happening in another sense, and you won't be surprised when something's happening with your country that you get stability hits or anything like that because you miss some mechanics that's not working out for you. Uh, Another important thing, as we talked, you want to do surrounds, you want to do something, attack, annihilate the enemy troops, do something, is that you need a couple of troops to maneuver. So if you're playing a smaller country, try to make a plan where you have more troops to maneuver. To have one heavy tank, you will never be able to surround units, but if you have a couple of units, you could always go and attack. You can go in depth, take these two provinces, surround them and annihilate them without needing to uh, play with another player asking for support all the time so you will be much more uh, uh, independent on the battlefield making your own surrounds uh, and then be able to annihilate troops uh, so if you go with uh, more troops uh, perhaps of less quality you at least can surround things you can do your more independent operations uh, and that's a cool way with the speed run too. You can see, do this work. Will I just get one ta one uh, heavy tank until the war? Is this worth it? Should I go with light tanks instead or something that I can afford and make my own independent maneuvers with? Uh, and as I said, you need uh, a couple of divisions. That's really important. Uh, military output is really important. If you have the possibility to reach research something, giving you more military output, do it, go for it. Maximize your military output and you will have a more fun game, you will have more resources, more uh, units at the start of the game to actually do things with and make a difference in the game and make some impact. But that's just a few startup tips for from the Higoi community. Uh, please check out our YouTube channel. We're gonna post more videos, more content, more information, more things for you to learn to play this game in a much better way in the future. Uh, if you're part of the community, you're always welcome to ask our quest, ask us questions with what you need to know and what you want help with. So be seeing you guys. Uh, have a nice day.